As you say, my name is Constable Wendy Basic. Uh, I've been with the police service for s almost 17 years. The last two and a half I've spent with the recruiting unit. I'm here with my partner, um, Constable Mark, Mark Music. And basically, we, we're recruiters, we attend career fairs, we do background investigations on applicants who apply for positions with our service and anything that may come across our desk. So what I'm gonna do today is just kind of go over the application process for a police officer as well as a cadet and just kind of give you, um, I'll show you a video on what a day in the life is like for a police officer. And I think that was it. We're kind of restrained to about 20 minutes, so it's gonna be very brief. I'll open it up to questions at the end. If you feel free to come up to the mic and ask us a question, if you don't feel comfortable with that, Maybe after everybody's gone, just come up to the desk or to the, bo to the booth upstairs. We'll be happy to answer any questions. So we'll begin. Here, I'll let Mark do it. So just a little overview of the application process for the police officer position as well as the cadet. You must be 18 years of age or older all you need is a grade 12 uh, education or equivalent, meaning a GED. You must have a valid class five license and you, you can't have any more than four demerits uh, on your license. Uh, you have to be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident or a landed immigrant status. No involvement in criminal activity within the last two years, which includes uh, the use of illegal drugs. Uh, if you have been convicted of any criminal offense, you must get a pardon prior to applying. Uh, there's vision standards, I believe it's 2020, without corrective or with corrective or without corrective lens. If you do wear glasses, it's, it's a minimum of a 2040 uh, vision. Uh, you'll have hearing standard, as well as you'll have to complete a uh, physical test. So if you meet these, uh, these qualifications, you're gonna move on to the first step or the second step of the application, which is the written test. Uh, it's a multiple choice um, exam. It's based, they call it a grade 12 aptitude test. So they figure if you've passed grade 12, you should have no problem passing this test. If you're successful with the written test, and I can say all these steps are pass fail. Should you pass one, you move on to the next step. If you fail, you'll have to wait at least a year to reapply. So if you're successful in the written test, you'll move on to the panel interview, which is comprised of question answers and of a panel of uh, two members of senior officers. Again, pass fail. If you've passed that, you move on to a background investigation is what can Mark and I um, do in the office. It's 130 questions. It's all about you. You sit down with, uh, with an officer and you tell us about your life. From that, we take your answers and we do a lengthy, intense investigation. We will find everything out about you. So this is the important part that you need to be truthful. If you're not truthful, it doesn't look good, good for you. Uh, three things can come out of the background investigation. You're either recommended, you're recommended with a concern, or you're not recommended. Not recommended, obviously, you're gonna have to reapply and you'll be given a, uh, a deferral period when you can't apply. You're recommended, and you're rec or recommended with the concerns, you're gonna go on to the next step, which is a psychological done by a psychologist. It's actually a 400 question multiple choice uh, test. Uh, after that, you'll meet with a psychologist one-on-one, -on -one, you'll go over that, those results, and then you'll have a medical examination. The step six is when you're compared to everybody else and the selection panel is made up of, like I say, senior officers and they pick who they want, the best of the best. For the last recruit class, I believe we had almost 500 applicants. When they, everybody got down to step six, there were 60 left and they picked 48. So the process takes from the time you apply to the time you finish anywhere from nine to 11 months. So. It's not just come in, apply, and you find out within a couple weeks. You gotta be patient, and you have to be prepared. So if you're lucky enough to get to step seven, you're offered employment. We also have a new program um, with the cadets. It's been up and running for about a year and a half. 
For the cadets, it's the same application process, same uh, qualifications, same steps. Cadet training, after you're offered that uh, employment, you're going to be sent to the police academy where you're paid to go to train. It's going to be eight weeks of academics, uh, which includes use of force, uh, computer training, um, criminal code, your powers of arrest. Uh, and then you'll be sent out to the field um, to work with a supervisor on the street, just kind of uh, learning, the, learning what to do and how to deal with people. If you get through, the, okay, just a little bit more about the cadet. I guess there's two differences, the police officer, like there's two parts of our service, there's police officers and then there's the civilian side of it. Uh, cadets are referred to as civilians. Um, you, you have the same benefits. Um, it's just they divided uh, the service in half. Um, can you just flip over that? Yeah. No, back. Keep, no, that's. No. Keep going. Next one. Okay, what are your duties as a cadet? Uh, you're sworn police officers, but you have limited uh, abilities or limited powers. There are ambassadors. They help us out with stuff that we don't really have time to do. We don't send you into high priority calls. You're, you're issued a vest, uh, pepper spray, and a baton. We don't give you a gun, and like I say, we don't put you in any hopefully dangerous situations. You're there to help us with traffic duty, um, guarding crime scenes, guarding patients at hospital, uh, spe attending special events, anything that uh, doesn't pose any danger to you. So you won't be attending any kind of 911 calls for service. You work days and evenings, 365 days a year. The days uh, is from 7 in the morning till 5 in the evening, and evenings is 3 till 1 in the morning. You have to commit to full-time training. The 15 weeks must be full-time. After you graduate from the cadet program, you can pick a part-time position. These, this cadet position is ideal for anybody coming out of high school who has an interest in law enforcement. This will give you the life experience to use down the road if you're interested in being a police officer. Just because you're a cadet doesn't mean you're gonna be a police officer, but if you prove yourself and you do well, you have a better chance of striving to be a police officer and being successful with it. So go to the recruit training. Again, it's paid training. It's done at our police academy out in St. James area. You're going to attend a little longer. It's going to be five months of academics, and you're going to, your training is going to be a little more intense, a little more physical. Um, again, driver training, use of force, firearms training, computer training, simunition training. After the five months, you're going to go out to four months of field training where you're paired up with a partner in a car and you're going to attend calls for service and they're going to show you how to answer those calls to service and they're going to show you what happens after you attend that call. If you're su successful in both these processes, you're going to graduate and start your career. So what's a day in the life like of a general patrol officer? Um, we rotate between three shifts, days, evenings and nights. Days can be 7 o'clock till 5 in the evening, evenings 4.30 till 2.30 in the morning, and good old night shift 9.30 till 7.30 in the morning. Again, 365 days a year. Um, it works out to be 16 days a month you work. And between those shifts, you usually have four to five, even six days off. So you get a lot of time to rest, a lot of time to recover from, from, from the long shifts. So you're reporting for your first day at work. Um, you tend the locker room, uh, you get dressed and ready to start prior to the shift. You're gonna go to your briefing room where there's a meeting held by your shift supervisor and he's gonna tell you of uh, anything that you should be on the lookout for that day or night. Any, any um, serious incidents, incidents that happened overnight and people of interest that maybe you should have an eye out for while you're out in the street. You're gonna be teamed up with your partner and assigned to a cruiser car. From there, you're going to be get your radio, your car keys, um, your taser. You're going to gather your belongings. Usually, we carry a briefcase with all applicable police paperwork that we may need throughout the day when attending calls. 
and then you're going to attend to your cruiser car. You're going to do a quick check to make sure everything's in uh, running order. And then you're going to sign on your laptop and wait for your first call of the day. So when you're in general patrol, it's basically attending 911 calls for service or non-emergency calls for service. It's not up to you which one calls you're going to take. It's up to the dispatcher. If you're available, they'll send you somewhere. After you spend your um, three or four years on the street gaining that experience in attending calls, that's when you're going to have the opportunity to maybe go to specialty units like major crimes, um, child abuse, forensics, canine unit. And I know everyone asks, how do I get to SWAT? You have to spend that time on the street taking calls and learning from that and proving yourself that you're a good police officer to be giving that, that opportunity to do special, specialized uh, stuff. So that was obviously a good day for us. It doesn't happen like that all the time, actually. It only, probably only happens about 10% of, of the time that we're in the area we actually catch, well, maybe probably even 2% of the time, catch the, uh, the offender right after the act. We usually go to the calls half an hour, an hour, two hours after they have occurred. So it's, it's basically just getting there, taking the statement, and then trying to find uh, the culprit who did it. So kind of just gives you an idea of what start to finish of a, of a good call is like. So after, so after he's, um, the suspect is arrested, he's brought back to the police station, or he's actually notified of his arrest. He's brought back to the police station where he's processed, which means we can spend hours and hours and hours of our doing notes, reports, and processing the accused. Uh, he's eventually taken for fingerprints and then either um, released with a court date or if he's got any kind of criminal record or, or it depends on the circumstance, he might be um, taken to jail. So as you can see, there's a lot of opportunity uh, within the Winnipeg Police Service even though you have to spend those years by in, taking calls for service, once you get your experience, there's tons of areas to branch out in, in and follow your dreams of, uh, or your interests. The opportunities we have right now is the cadet class. Uh, application opens May 22nd and closes June 29th. This is the perfect opportunity for anyone who's interested in, in a career with law enforcement coming out of high school to see if it's something that it's meant to be that they're interested in. With the cadet program, you're going to be contributing to a, a pension right away, and you also get great benefits. I know that probably doesn't seem important to you right, right now, but in probably 10, 15 years, it's huge. You will always have that job security. There's never going to be a police officer that's going to be laid off. You'll always have a job. So I can say, if you are interested, um, check out the website. Everything is... Uh, on that website. Every question is answered on there. It's all the information you need to apply, where you have to go, and what you need to bring.